Good morning, everyone there. My name is Juan Afonso, and today we're having a new discussion, our Academy Treatment Plan Seminar and Literature Review. And keep in mind that you can watch us every Tuesday at half past eight or a quarter to nine. You can watch here uh, our Academy at Avenida da Liberdade, or we can, you can be with us through our social, social media Instagram page. <laughs> so, today's topic is about titanium versus zirconia versus temporary anchorage devices osseointegration. And it's a crucial topic for us to talk about because it's important for us to understand this property and to see how it works in different types of implant, implants. And so, this debate, as I told you, it's crucial because uh, you know every department from all the clinics around the world, they must be familiar with this topic because not only the oral surgery department, but also the prosto, the pediatrics, the orthodontics, they must understand the behavior of this type of uh, treatment. This is us, this is our International Academy, uh, the International Advanced Dentistry, but also in other clinics we should pay attention to this specific uh, topic. I always like to begin with a small introduction and to tell a little bit about the history of implant dentistry because it's that way that we are able to understand why certain products appeared uh, in the nowadays. Beginning with uh, uh, titanium, we know that uh, implant, implants made of titanium were introduced the first time in 1965 by Brain Mark when he introduced the first uh, titanium implant into a patient. And what happened is that since then, uh, titanium has been the product, the material that it's been mostly used. So we know there are four main types of dental implants, but the one that we use the most is endosseous, and this type of implant has great properties, such as, for example, the low density and the low degree of thermal expansion. Basically, you know, we know that titanium itself is a very active element, resulting in a low standard electrolyte potential. In the reaction, we know that it's titanium that is going to react into titanium plus the electrons to electrons and we are going to have a reaction with the environment that it's going to be a chemical stability and this has consequences this is going to have a difficult in smelting it's going to be a high corrosion resistance and of course uh, it's a very biocompatible uh, material but what happened is that uh, patients began to have more demands. Patients began to have more aesthetic demands and if you think about titanium implants, they always have that grey colour and teeth are not white, are not, are white. Are there. So it's totally different. And another thing is that there's the demand for metal-free devices and that's why ceramic implantology uh, started to emerge in the market. We first had the oxide alumina implants, but they were removed from the market because they had very low chemical and physical properties. And then the oxide zirconia appeared at the 90s. And there are two uh, most common forms that we have. Itra stabilized tetragonal zirconia or alumina stabilized tetragonal zirconia. And they have promising physical and chemical properties such as high fracture toughness, low elasticity model, for example, and wear and corrosion resistance. Uh, talking a little bit also about temporary anchorage devices, the name itself explains a little bit what they are used for. They were introduced in the uh, 1983 and they were introduced by two orthodontists that thought well, maybe we can use uh, mini implants to do a certain force with, uh, with, stand, uh, with, um, with a proper magnitude and duration. And that's why they were introduced, because there's a more versatility of orthodontic, orthodontic tooth movements. And they do not rely on patient's uh, compliance. So this is a very important fact. And also, we keep, have to keep in mind the places where we can insert them. For example, we can insert them in below the nasal spine, the palate, uh, the infrasychomatic crest. And uh, when we are talking about implant dentistry, we need to understand uh, two main topics, which are the bio biology and the biomechanics. When we are talking about biology, we need to understand the interaction between uh, the art tissues and the implants, so we are talking about osseointegration. But we also need to understand the uh, behave with soft tissue, so with the stable attachment that it's with the surrounding tissues. But we also need to see the biomechanics, so 
of course we need to see the resistance of shoeing loads here i'm talking about titanium implants and zirconia implants uh, but also the micro screws that we are going to place in our patients they are uh, they are going to have loads also and we have to see the microscopic fixtures here i'm talking about the diameter the geometry of the implant and so on the first topic also that I would like to discuss with you is about the surface treatment because this, is, this property, this modification that it's going to be done to the implant is going to optimize the bone implant contact by increasing the contact between the implant and bone cells. So it's crucial because one, it's one of the most critical factors for uh, achieving successful and long-term uh, osteointegration. And the first article that I bring to you, it's a review about the modifications in zirconia, but doesn't, all, uh, doesn't just talk about zirconia itself, it, talk, it does a comparison between uh, ceramic implants and also titanium implants. And as you can see here in this picture, there are many types of modifications that can be done. The machine, the acid etching that is often used with sandblasted coatings. But what this review tells us, I'm going to tell some uh, bullet points uh, of the conclusion, is that machine zirconia has a, a similar bone implant contact and even it's a bit higher than machine titanium implants. And in vitro and in vivo studies, they show that machine and acid etched zirconia decrease the addition of bacteria when compared to titanium. So this is regarding the the topic that I told about the biology, it's about comprehending the, the, inter, the, the relationship between the soft tissue and the implant. But we do need further studies to understand exactly how these implants are going to work uh, in long period time. Now, talking a little bit about hard tissue, uh, we know that uh, the um, other metals uh, and uh, ceramic, they do also also integrate, not only titanium integrates. So the clinical success is characterized by this new bone formation and remodelation. And uh, first I'm going to talk about specifically titanium and zirconia and then I'm going to talk about the micro screws because it's easier to understand. And what we see from the evidence nowadays is that some retrospective studies at five and seven years, they conclude that the, there is healthy peri-implant tissues uh, around the zirconia implants and that when we have loaded the implants after one and two years of functional loading, uh, the bone remodeling is very similar to the titanium implants. It's, it's interesting because Talmalzov in 2020, he did a finite element analysis, which is basically a three-dimensional computer uh, uh, program that is applied to understand the biomechanics uh, with, uh, of the bone implant interface, and it's going to study uh, the distribution of crustal bone stress. So he did three types of models, and the three conclusions that he had, it's that there is better distribution of peri-implant tension around zir uh, zirconia uh, implants. There's a less uh, there's a lower stress transmission and in terms of facts, in terms of, of our clinic perspective, it means that there's a reduced peri-implant bone reabsorption that it's mechanically induced. So these are facts that we have to keep in mind. Uh, I bring to you uh, the other review that I put in the bio, bio, bibliography, it's zirconia versus titanium and there are some topics that I would like to tell you about. That's the first one, there's not a statistical difference among bone implant contact of the different implants. There's no difference in the osteointegration between acid etched zirconia and the titanium implants. Uh, so actually everything is well balanced between these two types of implants. Uh, here we have a phrase that says although uh, titanium shows superior also integration property than zirconia, it's almost the same. And then we're going to talk a little bit also about temporary anchorage devices or we can call them micro screws, we can call them micro implants and as I told you, I gave you a few examples of the places where we can insert them. In terms of location we have sort of periosteal, transosteous and endosteous but keep in mind that when fixed to the bone it can be either mechanically, so we're talking about cortically stabilized or biochemically, biochemically, so also integrated. And their success rate is ranged from 79% till 98%. But keep in mind that this success rate was not significantly correlated with cortical bone density. 
So, uh, another topic that I would like to discuss is about immediate loading of these types of implants. After our live session, we are going to discuss a little bit about this uh, with the people that are presentially here at the clinic. But I always had the doubt, if they are mini screws, if their name is mini implants, should we load them? And what this uh, review tells us is that immediate loading doesn't affect osseointegration, but we have to keep in mind that when we are uh, in thin cortical bone, there might occur a little extrusion and tipping of the micro implant. It also tells us that there's no statistically, uh, statistically differences between uh, the unloaded and loaded micro implants in terms of osseointegration. Uh, to keep in mind when we are using these uh, small diameters of 1.2 and 1.3 millimeters made from titanium alloy, they are strong enough for immediate loading, even in uh, thin cortical bone areas. But what this review suggests is that we use a, uh, we do a drilling, uh, we drill a pilot hole to reduce the, prob uh, the probability of breakage of the micro implant. The other topic that I would like to discuss today, uh, it's important that all the departments understand this, is that there's a difference between success rate and the survival rate. And it's important because every day when we are reading uh, articles, they always refer to this. But they are very different from each other. When we are talking about survival, we are talking about an implant that it's in the place where we inserted it, but it has or it doesn't have any type of modification. And it's for a period of at least five years. When we are talking about success, it's totally different. We are based on three things. We are based on functional aspects. Here we are talking about chewing, we are talking about speaking if the uh, implant behaves in a proper way, or physiological aspects. For example, we are talking about osseointegration, we are talking about uh, the relationship with the soft tissues, and we are also talking about psychological aspects. So we are talking about if the person had a good experience, if the person enjoys the aesthetics of the implant. So, uh, this is very important and of course that survival rate doesn't talk about this. And in terms of success it cannot be shown any local or systematic allergy or any type of negative reaction. And uh, we see also the changes in the margin bone level. Uh, everybody knows and understands and sees many evidence about titanium survival rates. So here I'm going to tell you a little bit about zirconia implant survival rate. Pierre Ali in 2017 had a survival rate of 95%. And there's an interesting study by Stefan Rowling in 2018 that he compared non-commercialized uh, ceramic implants with commercialized uh, ceramic implants. But what we can see is that there's a big difference of a little bit more than 20% so 71 and then the commercialized one have 93 percent so this means that uh, we are getting two values that are uh, much more uh, are almost the same as the titanium ones Balmer had a percentage in 20, uh, 20, uh, 2020 of 98 percent but we do uh, need more high level of evidence clinical and we need to confirm this uh, in long-term predictability in terms of success rates, Oliver in 2010 had a rate of 95%, Stefan Rowling in 2015 had a rate of 77%, but, and it differed a little bit from each diameter of the implant. And Balmer in 2020, it's interesting because he had almost 90% of the implants that had a margin bone loss uh, of 1.5 millimeters or less than that. So the margin bone loss of zirconia implants are very similar to those that we have on titanium implants. So thank you very much for joining us here at the Academy. I hope that's, that this seminar helps you to understand a little bit of osseointegration of these different types of implants.